And you will go ahead and get started this afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and congratulations to this year's top uh, freshman award recipients up here. We will get to hear a little bit more about them and you know them better as we're introducing in our program. Um, but I just wanted to welcome you to our 12th annual Top 10 Freshman Ceremony. I see some of you who have been in attendance just about every year. Um, and that's great to see. I'm Rachel Lloyd, and it is an honor to oversee this program this year, along with Dean Evans, who uh, is from our Advisory Center and served as director of the Honors Program. And I wanted to thank you as family members, friends, faculty, staff, coaches, mentors of all types for being here with us today, whether in attendance in person or joining the live stream. Um, and also for just supporting these students as they journey along their own educational paths. And I also would like to thank the President's partners for funding this important recognition uh, program. I know several of you are in attendance as well. Thank you for your support. And also, um, any of the administration, which I have a good number of here. I know Dr. Gaffer is President, and Dr. Gerber, Dr. Gaffer is there. Yeah, I spent uh, students there to do all the management. And also, thank you to Aaron Smith and David Frazier for helping to set up and technology. And we're just going to be this year, we did not print the but I'd like to call your attention to the next slide here just to kind of give you an idea of the flow of our program. And um, first, or next, I'd like to introduce you to this year's selection committee members. First, we have um, Deborah Siegel Debbie, um, who has been a long time nursing faculty member here. And then we have Trevor Melvin, who is new, uh, somewhat new to our science department, number science and science department. And then we have Mr. Jeff Neal, a long time president's partner. Uh, represented. Um, so thank you to you all because this is definitely not a task this year. Um, now I would like to invite uh, one of our honorees this year, uh, Jacob Paulus, who is also a business major, to come up and introduce our keynote speaker for the event, Mr. Jonas Reagan. Jonas Raymond served as Chief Hospital Director of the State Iowa Hospital in the Southern State Hospital. He previously served as Regional Clinic Director at Emergency Medicine for both Defense, as well as Vice President and Chief Nursing Officer at the Southern State Hospital. Prior to joining the Texas, he worked in a department master and coordinated in the Senate. Raymond earned a nursing associate degree at North East Federal Seminary. He then became a Bachelor of Science, nursing and master of business administration. From Oklahoma West Southern University, the American Hospital of Healthcare Executive, served on the Oklahoma Hospital Association Council on Quality and Business Services. He is an active member of the Miami and Royal Rotary Club in the Ottawa County, United States, and serves on the Bright and Pink Committee, the Miami County Classic Center Board of Directors, and is a graduate of the of Raymond was also inducted into the Northeastern Oklahoma Women's College Hall of Fame as an outstanding young alum. In 2018, they were honored as one of the journal directors of Sheepers Under 40 for 2020. The Sheepers Under 40 program honors individuals who contribute significantly to the professions, community, and our great state of Oklahoma. Raymond and his wife, Erin, have three children who are about to go to Oklahoma. In his spare time, he enjoys being with his family. Coaching the Olympic sport and performing with the Brazen and Olympic Band Please join me in welcoming the first grade of the city. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
new recommendations came out this week. Those, uh, I hope you guys saw those. Those go get more vaccinated and no longer have to social distance or wear the mask. Or if you're with one family that hasn't been vaccinated, but they're a low-risk family, you're more than welcome to so remove your masks. So, uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, I, I want to just thank you, thank everyone, for the opportunity to, uh, to come and speak to you today. I'm very honored to do so. And I want to say congratulations to you guys. You're uh, Being the top 10 in the class isn't something uh, that you should take for granted or take widely. It, it, it's a wonderful achievement. Um, as you mentioned, I'm John Strangle, I'm the, the Chief Hospital Executive uh, for Integris Grove Hospital and Integris Mile Hospital. Um, I'm married to a woman that I've blinded long enough to uh, say I do. Uh, she's a, a beautiful woman, a beautiful wife, her name is Erin, three wonderful kids. Um, Eli is 14, Addie is 12, and uh, um, Addie is my uh, middle child and the one that specifically one of us mentioned her today. So if you know Addie or Addie is watching online, there you go, sis. So, uh, just a, a little bit about myself. Um, I was raised in Miami. I went to one of the parents here. I uh, graduated from Miami High School. Uh, I graduated twice. 2002 uh, 2004, I joked I'm one of the only students uh, to turn a junior college into a major university. And so, I actually had a rich profession to count my high school senior year when I was in current classes as well. So. Uh, I had a couple times in the video, uh, a lot of fond memories with uh, entering the PCN after a couple of years. And so after I graduated uh, the nursing program in 2004, I started my career in Joplin, Missouri, where I was in the cardiovascular physical And after a couple of years there, I was promoted. I was the youngest promoted at that time uh, to what they call a critical athletic position. It's called the 40 shift, and they just established me and put me. I uh, worked with the uh, taking care of six patients or if they had a you know, short staff patient for that night. There's a little bit of a drill of junkie. Uh, people ask me uh, to this day about if I miss nursing and, and miss the bedside. And I would say that I miss the, the relationships you establish with the patient, but I also miss taking care of those, of those specific people. And uh, I, I really, really enjoyed uh, my time doing that. And I was on night shift and my time in John Brennan in, in 2010. Uh, we had a young family, and my first two kids, and so my wife and I just started uh, talking about the you know, transition to a day shift role. And I had a buddy, uh, one of my best friends still to this day that I worked with. I made a, a transition to grow um, a few months before, and so he called me and said, Hey, we've got a day shift team leader position over here, and you know, so you'd be interested in, in, in that role. So my um, wife and I discussed it, we interviewed, and the rest is history. I applied to the team leader role. They had a month of orientation, my first day of orientation. Uh, we saw 76 patients in the emergency department that day. I remember like it was yesterday. It was extremely busy day. Uh, my CNO, Vice President, Chief Nursing Officer called and she said, well, Let your director go and you're the interim director. And it's kind of like, Okay. You know, in my time in Joplin, I was looked at as a, a leader, but a leader as far as making clinical decisions. I had never been a manager or someone that had, had managed others. And so you know, I, I looked at this and I thought, you know, we, we, we can do this. You know, we, can, we, we can get through this. And so accepted it. Not uh, long into that, uh, we had a little bit of success um, in that role. So they, they removed the other tap, maybe the, the Director of the emergency department. So we, we start making some strive strive efforts. We, you know, our throughput scores improved, our level of being seen improved, our uh, patient experience improved. And so I was promoted to the regional uh, emergency department director. Uh, we'll go through them on my campuses. Uh, had a, a new medical director at the time, uh, just coming out of his fellowship. And so his boss said, hey, listen to that guy. And I'm here, I am. I'm so young. I'm, you know, 28, 30 years old. And I'm learning myself and reading all the latest and greatest books on how to improve the deep methods. And so together, you know, we, we transformed the mining form. And we're actually some of the best numbers in the country as far as our, our throughput, our patient experience, um, the level of our business work, but for that we started mention. We won a uh, women's choice of work, the top PR, uh, awards throughout the system. And so it's something to be very, very proud of. 
And so at that time, it was back in 2015, my uh, vice president, chief medical officer, Bro, who had pressed me you know, to stay the course. When I started at Bro, I just had my associate's degree, my associate's degree. And she, she pressed me to go back to, to get my bachelor's in science of nursing and also my MBA in finance. And so she left for another for opportunity. At that time, I was able to, to, to transition to apply. I selected for that role. She was in that role a year and a half. And one of my best friends uh, was promoted. He was the president of the center of Miami within our system. And then to the city. I applied. I was selected for that role. And two years ago, almost two years ago, I was promoted to the ball of the Miami. Uh, if you would ask me 10 years ago, or uh, Dr. Stafford allowed me almost 20 years ago when I was in the um, I would have thought that I'd be standing here today as president of two facilities. I'll tell you, you're crazy. Um, and so, know that. Know that whatever you set your, your mind to, your size to, is definitely achievable. Whatever you want, you need to do it. And you just have to have to stay for it. Um, this year has definitely been the toughest year of my life. And I know a lot of you can, can echo those sentiments, but being a, a healthcare executive, Managing two facilities um, in the midst of the whole life and business has been extraordinarily tough. Uh, not only the planning uh, that was, that was uh, went into this, uh, but just, just watching our caregivers and the, the mental anguish um, that has come over the time. You know, the skin breakdown, you see all the news from the TV, and wearing the masks and the shields. And then just, as I mentioned, the mental anguish from the amount of death. Nurses and physicians and, and we're used to that. We, we work in healthcare. You know, but just the amount that you know, we were experiencing, it, it was just overwhelming at times. But here we are. We're in March 2021, and we have COVID numbers flowing uh, right now. Uh, we have you know, signs of great things to come. And you know, we, we, we can get to this point um, nearly a year after the, the pandemic started by rolling over. And by quitting. We got here by staying the course, by pressing on, and, then, and by just, just doing, putting one foot in front of the other. But my, uh, one of my favorite followers on uh, Instagram, the guy I follow, a lot of his name, Cameron Haynes. And Cameron Haynes is an avid bow runner. He is a, an also marathon runner who loves to live in the world of the same and slowly is keep coming. And that's what we have to do. You know, this past year, and what we continue to do as a country and as a world. Um, you know, just these uh, past few weeks um, have been extremely difficult for my wife and myself. Uh, just some of, the, some of the things we've been really experiencing. Uh, there's almost too many to tell this, but you know, we've had multiple grandparents. This is just within our family. I died in the I had a grandpa was rapidly deteriorating with dementia. Uh, one of my grandparents. Almost bled to death after a simple procedure. We had an extended family member that overdosed on opioids, another family member that diagnosed with sexual cancer. And this has just been in the last several weeks. I mean, this is this. And I know a lot of you have similar stories and similar hardships, but I'm here to tell you that there is life being become for all these things. You know, I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't share just a little bit of, of my spiritual background. I, I, uh, I am a son and a grandson to two pastors, and so um, that is something that helps me be good and, and make it, you know, each day. And, you know, I can tell you that just what helps, what helps me the most is knowing that I've got the most of And that's it for me. And so I've got a, a, a couple things that I want to share with you. Uh, one of those is, is uh, Philippians 3, 12 and 14. And this is how you know, it says, not that I've already obtained this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on to the goal to win the prize for which God has called me in a heavenly word, and call me heaven, heavenly word in Christ Jesus. So to close, um, you guys, if you already know, if you have a need, you wouldn't be sitting up here today if you didn't have a need. If you could continue to press on, stay the course, and you know, 
the skies of the Bridge of the Mountain. I'm going to still listen. Uh, Brian Houston is a pastor from Kosovo, Australia. My soul is today, so I'm going to give it to you. Ten influences every leader needs. A companion who is with you, a mentor who loves you, a friend that is truthful, a network that is healthy, a team that completes you, a faith that is enduring, an input that is improving you, a hero that inspires you, an environment that gives you dreams, and an environment that improves you. So I, I encourage each of you to identify something up off this list and keep going.
um, really contributed to my academic success. Uh, I want to be able to uh, not you guys. So thank you. instructors such as Dr. Eves and Mrs. Robinson challenged me to become a better student. I'd also like to send special thanks to Mr. Aldrich, Mrs. Patterson, and Mrs. Kellogg for helping to lay my mathematical foundation and prepare me for the chemical engineering program at OSU. It was these instructors, along with my parents, that helped me to become the student that you see today. I look forward to seeing you all as I close the book on EBL at graduation. Thank you. Um, next up, we have Abby Ishmael. She actually had a conflict with that she had a softball, softball game this afternoon. So we're going to go ahead and read over her um, information and then save her award for her. Abby Ishmael is a pre elementary education major from Miami, Oklahoma. She is an active member of EPK Honor Society and the NEO Honors Program. She is also on the Lady North softball team. Her dedication to achieving academic success earned her recognition as a second team All American. Abby strives to lead by example not only for teammates but across campus. Her positive attitude and determination are evident in those who work alongside her. Abby has devoted time to serving in our local elementary school classrooms, stepping up and filling in where help is needed, and reading to fifth graders. Roshana Power, any of history instructor and state sponsor, wrote of Abby and character, helps to elevate whatever company she's in. So let's just get Abby a little bit. We have Patrick Taylor. He is a fifth administration major, Taylor is from Rosalind Cohen. Patrick is an active member of the annual honors program and specifically the first European and non-English native speaker of the program. Through his participation in this program, Patrick has volunteered for the local community in Poland, taking part in the charity action of the great orchestra of Christmas tree. Outside of academic service, Patrick spends his time playing with the NUM soccer team, where he stands out as a respected student leader. In the honors program director, who is out of the road of Patrick's report recommendation letter, he puts other teams before his own and goes out of his way to make sure people are prepared for. Patrick has a constant learning for knowledge. He seeks to go beyond such a matter and how the world works and how we make the world a better place. Congratulations. First of all, I'd like to say something how I think about the commentary of 2019 has been a non-profit that we didn't even know a very good one in the for me. However, thanks to work ethic and fighting myself, I was able to make significant progress at the, at the first time. Of course, it would be possible without the help of my fault, just by one, over in the first class of years, we are not an angel at least, but I think a lot to make a response at any point. I would also like to thank all my instructors and other people who have been with one for it. I believe that I'm accomplishing the skills I need today for those who put in effort to make their dreams to your reality. I want to make this dream come true every day. Thank you. Next up, we have Jennifer Hill. She's a Throughout the time that NEO, Jennifer works to serve others. 
These are just a few things that I've learned here at the Yale from my professors that were not in syllabus and were most definitely not written in the curriculum. And that's something that's so special about my experience here and everything to do with Yale experience. I just want to say thank you for that. Thank you for that one on one faculty and staff and students and everyone that we got to get to know. Um, we would not have to be up here without um, the time and effort that you put into lots of students. So thank you, and I'm thinking more money. Thank you for being here and congratulations to the cohort of 
top 10 freshman students. Let's give them one more round of applause.